Hello, everyone. Uh, let's get started in a few minutes time. Just hold for a second. Okay, here we go. We will start with the first question. Let me just get the AC correct. And uh, I hope everyone can hear me clearly. It's all good. Okay, so we are gonna start with the P1 paper, June 2022 and the very first question. So I'll start with the recording. June 2022, the first variant, question number one. Let's look at the first question. Part A, express x square minus 8x plus 11 in form x plus p whole square plus q, where p and q are constants. Now, this is a question regarding the completing square method. What is the completing square method? we have to get the expression in the form x minus h whole square plus k. This is the standard form of the completed square format. Now, they have given it as such. It's exactly the same thing, except when we are dealing with the turning point, this is the standard form that we use and not this. So let's get started. The very first thing is, make sure the coefficient of x square is one, which is already one, x square minus eight x plus bracket square minus bracket square plus 11. What do we add and subtract? Square of half the coefficient of x. We rewrite the first three terms as a perfect square. This is x minus four whole square. This is negative 16, this part plus 11, which simplifies to x minus 4 whole square minus 5. This is in the completed square form. What is the next part? The next part is hence find the exact solution of this equation, this expression equal to 1. In other words, we have the equation x minus 4 whole square minus five, this is this, equal it to one. X minus four whole square equals to six. X minus four equals to plus minus square root of six. And then we will be ending up with two answers, either or. When we talk about either, we will take the positive value of the square root. Therefore, X is equals to four plus root six. And when we talk about or, we will talk about the negative value of the square root, that is negative root six. Therefore, x is equals to four minus root six. So the answer is in the exact form. Why? Because we have not used a calculator. We have left the answer in the radical form in the third form. So this is one answer. This is the other answer. That's how we complete the first question in a time period of three minutes. So now let's move to the next question. This is the next question. Let's get started with this. June 2022, first variant, question number two. Let's read the question. The 13th term of an arithmetic progression is 12, and the sum of the first 30 terms is negative 15. 
find the sum of the first 50 terms of this progression. Now, the very first thing, we are talking about an arithmetic progression, and we are talking about the 13th term is 12, and then we are talking about the sum of the first 30 terms as negative 15. And after we find the unknowns, we will find the sum of the first 50 terms of this progression. So first of all, let me write AP over here. So I have written AP over here. And the term formula, that is A plus N minus 1 into D. And the sum formula, that is N divided by 2, 2A two plus N minus 1 into D. Now let's first use the information for the 13th term. T13 is A plus 13 minus 1 into D, which is A plus 12D. And this 13th term value is 12. So 12 is equals to A plus 12D. That is the first equation that we obtain. And then we have sum of first 30 terms is 30 divided by 2, 2a plus 30 minus 1 into d. Sum of 30 terms is negative 15. 30 divided by 2 is also 15, but positive. And this is 2a plus 29d. This is equation number 2. Now we have to solve it simultaneously because a is unknown and d is unknown. So let's start solving. First of all, this term, this expression is already simplified. Let's focus on this one. So we have negative one is equals to 2a plus 29d. This is the simplified format of equation two. So let me write 2a plus 29d equals to negative one. And we have a plus 12d equals to 12. Let's multiply the second equation by negative 1. So this is negative a, this is negative 12d, this is negative 12. And let's add it up. So now when I add it up, what do I get? I get 2a minus a, which is a, 29 minus 12, which is 17d. And this is minus 1 and minus 12, that is minus 13. Actually, the I have to multiply, my bad. Let me go back. So this is the simplified form. Okay, so let me just pause over here for a second. Okay, let me continue from here. I'll start the recording once again. So let's get started. Now let's take this equation one, this equation two, and solve it simultaneously. Let's take equation one and multiply it with negative two. What do I get? This is negative 24. This is negative 2a. This is negative 24d. This is the refined form of equation one. And then we also have equation two, which is negative one. This is 2a and this is 29d. This is equation two. When I add up these two equation, the a's will cancel out. 24 and one adds up to 25 with a negative sign. And this is minus 24 plus 29, which is 5d equals to negative 25. Therefore, let's make the, the subject. This comes out to be negative 5. That is the first value that we obtain. And let's use any equation. Let me use this original equation 1, which is 12 is equal to a plus 2d. So 12 is equal to a plus 12d. It's not 2d, it's 12d. So this is a, this is 12, this is negative 5, this is 12 over here. So 12 is equals to a minus 60. Therefore, a comes out to be 72. That's how we obtain the value of a. 
So we found a, we found the, what are we looking for? We are looking for the sum of first 50 terms of this progression. So therefore sum of 50 terms, the formula is n divided by two, which is 50 divided by two, two a, which is two into 72, n minus one, which is 50 minus one into d, and d is negative five. So now let's use a calculator and simplify. This comes out to be uh, 25. And before I use the calculator, let me simplify it further. This is 144 and this is 49 into minus five. So this is 49 into negative five. And now the sum that comes out to be negative 25, 25. That is the answer for sum of 50 terms. So this was a question of AP that we completed in five minutes. Now the second question is completed. Uh, hold for a second. This seems to be a problem. It's a sharing issue. All right. Hold for a second. Uh, people, I'm just uh, resharing. Just hold for a second. Okay, I think uh, maybe you people could not see the whole thing. So just let me go over this. So the question is just here. The question is about the 13th term of an arithmetic progression is 12. The sum of the first 30 terms is negative 15. Find the sum of the first 50 terms of this progression. This is the term formula for 13th term. This is the equation that we get. Then this is the sum formula for 30. Sum of first 30 terms is negative 15. This is the equation that we get. We solve it simultaneously. I have used the process of elimination. I found the value of D, then I found the value of A, and last but not the least, sum of 50 terms using the sum formula again. This is the answer that I obtained. So now this is completed. Let's look at question number three, and I'll be starting the recording now. So let's get started with this. June, 2022. Paper 1-1, one, one, question three. Let's read the question. The coefficient of x power four in the expansion of this bracket is a. The coefficient of x squared in the expansion of this bracket is b. First, find a and b in terms of the constant k. That is what we are starting with. Now, first of all, coefficient of x4, in the expansion of this bracket, we are calling it A. And then coefficient of x squared in the expansion of this bracket, we are calling it B. So first of all, let's start with this. We have two x squared plus k squared x raised to power of minus one raised to power of five. And then we know that the particular term formula is NCR a raised to power of n minus r, b raised to power of r. Now keep in mind, this applies to anything of this format, a plus b raised to power of n. So now the first term is a, the second term is b. The first term is a, second term is b. First term is a, second term is b. So we don't know the value of r, so we will write 5cr. This is 2x squared raised to power of 5 minus r. And this is k square x minus one raised to power of r. Take the two from here, take five minus r from here, take the negative one from here, take r from here and simplify it out. So we are gathering powers of x. So when we get the powers of x, what do we get? This is two multiplying with five minus r and this is negative one multiplying with r and it should be equal to. Which term are we looking for? The coefficient of x squared. The term is of x, x4 
and it's not x square, it's x power four, and we are looking for its coefficient. So first of all, we are dealing with the power. So we equate it to four and then we solve. So 10 minus two R minus R equals to four, negative three R equals to four minus 10 is negative six. Therefore R comes out to be positive two. Now let's plug in the value of R over here and here. So we will write 5C2. This is 2X squared raised to power of three. This is K squared X minus one. Or let me go back and write it in the original form like this and raised to power of two. Now let me break this up into pieces. 5C2 is 10. Two raised to power of three is eight. K square raised to power of two is K raised to power of four. And let's focus on the variables. We have X square, it's raised to power of three, that's X power six. And this is one over X square. This is X power one, this is two. Let's double check. Yes, it's X power four and 10 into eight into K power four, that is 80 K power four. This is the coefficient. And this coefficient they have labeled as A. So this is what I've done for the first part only. Now let's focus on the second bracket. That is simpler. That is 2kx minus 1 raised to power of 4. And we are interested in the coefficient of x squared. So now we know we don't have to worry about r over here because if we are interested in x squared, so the power of this term should be a 2. So we write this thing like this, NCR, A raised to power of N minus R, B raised to power of R, we know the value of R will be two. So therefore we will write four C two. And this is two KX raised to power of two. And this is minus one raised to power of two. So now we know that four C two is how much? Four C two, is coming out to be six. Two raised to power of two is four. And K raised to power of two, I'll write it on the side. And X is also raised to power of two, that will be coming up. So K raised to power of two, let me write it first. And X raised to power of two is written on the side. And what about this? Minus one square, that is plus one. Six into four is 24, 24 K square. This is the coefficient of X square, and we are interested in this coefficient. So this is the coefficient that we are talking about, and we are calling it as B. So we have A, we have B, this is the first part. Now let's move to the second part. Given that A plus B, they add up to 216, find the possible values of K. So what is the coefficient A? That is 80 K power four. So this is 80 K power four. This is your A. And what is your B? Your B is 24 K square. And this adds up to 216. Let's divide by something. Let's say we divide by eight. So what do we get? This is 10 K power four. And this is 3k square, and this equals to 27. Let's transfer all the terms to one side. 10k power 4 plus 3k square minus 27 equals to 0. This is a disguised quadratic equation. Because there is k power 4 and k power 2 over here. So let's make a substitution. Let's write, let m equals to k square. So therefore 10 m square because m is k square. So m square is k power four. 10 m square plus three m minus 27 equals to zero. Now 27 into 10, that is 270. And uh, we can break this 27 into nine into three and 10 can be broken into five into two. So nine and two is 18. 
and three and five is 15. So 18 into 15, this difference is this much. That's perfect. So this is 18 M minus 15 M. And then we have 10 M square. And then we have negative 27 equals to zero. So let's simplify it further. This is 2 M and this is 5 M plus nine minus three. And this is 5 M plus nine equals to zero. And it's always a good idea to double check. So therefore this is 5 M plus nine and this is 2 M minus three equals to zero. Equate each bracket to zero. M is negative nine over five. M is positive three over two. But what is M? But M is equals to K square. It's right over here. So therefore we will write K square equals to negative nine over five. K square is equals to positive three over two. We will write no solution over here because we cannot take square root of a negative number. And over here, we will write K is equals to plus minus square root of three over two. These are the possible values of K. So this was a question regarding binomial that ended up in a quadratic equation, a disguised quadratic equation, and we completed this in approximately eight and a half minutes. So now three questions are down. Let's move on. So let's move to the fourth question. <clears throat> so let's get started. June, 2022, paper one, one, question four. We have to prove this identity. We have sine cube theta over sine theta minus one. So there is a negative one over here. And then there is a negative sign over here, sine squared theta over one plus sine theta. Now take care of all these positive negative sign and it should equal to this. And remember there is a negative sign over here. Now let's get started. We will write, we will start with the left hand side. And we will write, let S be the symbol that I'll use for sine theta for simplicity. Let C be the symbol that I will use for cosine of theta. So I'll write S cube divided by S minus one. There is a negative sign over here. And then S square over one plus sine. This is the left hand side. Now let's take LCM. What do we have? we have s minus one and this is one plus s and s cube is multiplying with one plus s and this negative is there and s square is there and it's multiplying with s minus one so let's focus on the numerator first so s cube into one is s cube s cube into s is s power four there is a negative over here, S square into S that is negative S cube and negative negative that becomes positive S square divided by S minus one and this is one plus S. Now, first of all, this cubic term and this cubic term over here gets canceled and we are left with what? We are left with S four plus S squared and what's in the denominator? Let's simplify it out. S minus one is multiplying with one plus S. S into one is S, S into S is S squared, minus one into one is minus one and this is minus S. So these two S will cancel out and we are left with S squared minus one. So this is divided by S squared minus one. Now let's use the identity sine square plus cos square equals to one. Therefore, let's transfer this one on the other side, sine square minus one is negative C square. So this one is negative C square. And what is happening at the top over here? Let's take S square common out. This is S square plus one. So therefore this S square 
dividing by c square that is tangent square theta negative sign is already there and this is sine square plus one i think this is what we were out to prove negative is there tangent square is there inside the bracket one plus sine square is there and this is the same thing as sine square plus one so the first part is completed now let's move on now it says solve this equation the same equation that we have proven double check it's exactly the same thing is equals to tan square one minus sine square theta now we know that this left hand side over here is coming out to be negative tan square theta and this is one plus sine square theta and this one over here this is tan square theta and this is one minus sine square theta now i think we should not cancel out because when we cancel out we lose the solution so let's first open up the bracket so therefore this is negative tan square theta and this is negative tan square theta sine square theta and then this is tan square theta minus tan square theta sine square theta now over here what do we have now we can see that yes these two terms are cancelling out so let's cancel out these two terms and then we have negative 2 tan square theta i have transferred this to the other side equals to how much which is zero so therefore i'll write tan square theta equals to zero tangent theta equals to zero and where is tangent theta equals to zero sine theta over cosine theta equals to zero in other words sine theta equals to zero now what is the range of value it's between zero and two pi and neither is zero inclusive nor two pi inclusive so let's just draw a small sketch over here just to give you the idea and that is how the graph of sine would look like and it is touching the x-axis at three points in this particular domain zero and pi and two pi neither is this inclusive nor is this inclusive therefore the only solution is this therefore theta comes out to be pi radians the answer is in the exact form now even usually whenever there is a possibility of taking common we all always take common but this common was already taken out so even if i cancel it at the beginning i'll end up with the same answer let's double check one plus s square is one minus s square and then we will be left with something like this negative two sine square equals to zero and we will end up with the exact same answer so we have completed this question in approximately six and a half minutes so four questions are completed let's look at the fifth one so let's get started with this june 2022 first variant question five let's look at the diagram and before that let's read the question the diagram shows a sector abc so this is a this is b this is c this whole thing is a sector of a circle with center a and radius r so let's underline there is a sector a b and the center is a and the radius is r so let me highlight this so let me go this way up till here and then let's go this way up till here and then let me mark with dots over here so that we know that this is the sector that we are talking about now this is abc and this is a sector and the angle is theta in the first part theta is pi by six and radius is still r then it says the line bd is perpendicular to ac so this line bd 
this is perpendicular to AC. And then it says um, angle CAB is theta radians. That's right over here. And find the exact area of BCD in terms of R. What is BCD? That is this segment right over here. Now, the rule is pretty simple. Find the area of the sector. Find the area of the triangle and then subtract. That's all about it. Now, first of all, let me focus on AD over here. So this is AD that I'm looking for. And let me focus on BD. And this is trigonometry based upon this angle. So first of all, let me write down sine of theta is equals to BD divided by R. Now, since the angle is one over six pi, sine of pi by six is half. And we should also write down cosine of pi by six, which is root three over two. So therefore, this is half, this is BD, this is R, therefore BD is half R. Similarly, cosine of theta is equals to AD divided by R. Now keep in mind, this is the opposite, this is the hypotenuse, this is the adjacent. For opposite, we are using sine. For adjacent, we are using cosine. So therefore, this is root three over two is AD over R. Therefore, therefore, AD is root three over two multiplying with R. Now, what about the area of the triangle? So the area of this triangle is half A, B, half sine C, that's one approach. The other approach is half into base into height and we'll be using this one because we know what the base is. So if the base is taken as this, then the height is this. So therefore this is the base, this is the height. So this is equaling half into root three over two multiplying with R and this is half R. So therefore this is coming out to be one over eight and this is root three and this is R square. That's the area of triangle. So this is completed. What about the area of the sector? Area of sector that is half R square theta. That is half and R square is R square and theta is pi by six. So this comes out to be pi over 12 R square. So now we are needing the area of this particular segment. That's a subtraction. Sector is bigger, triangle is smaller. So sector is bigger. So there it is. And this is triangle. So therefore area of the segment is sector is pi over 12 r squared minus root three over eight r squared. You can leave it as it is, or you can take the variable common out. That's pi over 12 minus root three over eight. This is leaving the answer in the exact form. Why? Because it's in terms of pi and it's in terms of square root, the thirds. And we are dealing with, uh, the units are not given. I was just looking for the units. The units are not given. So therefore just write units square over here. Now let's look at the second part. Now it says given instead that the length of BD is root three over two R. Find the exact perimeter of BCD in terms of R. Now let's go back and let's look at BD. So now BD for second part, for part B, BD is given as root three over two R. And that is the opposite. And this is still R and AB is still R. So now theta is unknown. So we need to find theta first. So sine theta is BD divided by AB. So these two R would cancel out and we are left with root three over two. So therefore theta is sine inverse of root three over two, which comes out to be pi by three. That's the first thing that is needed. This is all working for part B. Now, what about AD? We have to use cosine. 
So therefore, cosine of pi by three. So first of all, theta is found to be pi by three and cosine of pi by three is half and cosine of pi by three that is equaling AD divided by R. So half is equals to AD over R, therefore AD is half R. Now, since AD is half R, and that is one thing that you have to do, that is flip back and forth. So if AD is half R, and this whole thing is R, so how much is DC? So DC is half R. So DC is basically R minus AD, which is R minus half R, which comes out to be half R, this is DC. That's the first thing that's needed. And when we look at the segment, it goes something like this. So this is, I think, let me go up and check. This is D and C and B. So this is D and this is C and this is B. Uh, DB is given as root three over two R and DC is given as half R, right? And what else is there? We need to find this thing that is over here, the arc length BC. Now arc length BC is based upon R theta. R is R and theta is pi by three. That is uh, pi over three R. So now we have everything. So the perimeter of this segment BCD, that is half R and root three over two R and this is pi over three R. Again, if you want, you can take R common, that is half plus root three over two plus pi over three. And this is in units. This is the answer for this particular part. So now this question is completed and it took us eight and a half minutes to get it done. So now five questions are down. Let's move to the sixth question, which is about functions. Okay, so let's get started. June, 2022, first variant, question number six. So let's look at the question. The function f is defined as follows. This is a function fx and it has a quadratic expression at the top, a quadratic expression at the bottom. And what else is there? The domain is x is greater than two. First part, find an expression for f inverse x. So now let's apply the basic concept. Let y equals to fx. Therefore, f inverse y equals to x. So we will write y in place of fx, x square minus four over x square plus four, and we will make x the subject. So now um, we will multiply x square y plus four y is equals to x square minus four. So x square y minus x square, this is minus four y minus four. Let's multiply throughout by a negative sign. So this is x square minus x square y. This is four y plus four. And let's take x square common out and this is one minus y equals to four y plus four. So therefore x squared is four y plus four divided by one minus y. And let's take the square root. So therefore x is equals to square root of four y plus four divided by one minus y. Now, usually the rule is whenever the original function is to the right of the turning point. And since we don't know how to sketch, let's assume that this is the turning point or it's to the right of the turning point. And the examiner has not even emphasized upon that. So the rule is we take the positive sign with the square root because it's to the right of the turning point. And if it was to the left of the turning point, we would have taken a negative sign. So uh, let's just continue with it. X is f inverse y, therefore in other words, f inverse x is equals to square root, and this is four x plus four divided by one minus x. 
So this is the expression for the inverse function. That is the first part. Now let's look at the second part. It says show that this expression can be expressed as this. Basically, these are identical. Either we break this down into this, or we simplify and make it equal to this, and hence state the range of f. Now the first part is pretty simple. That is, just take LCM. So this is x squared plus 4. 1 gets multiplied with x squared plus 4. There is a negative sign and then an 8. So therefore, this is x squared plus 4 minus 8 divided by x squared plus 4. So this is x squared minus 4 over x squared plus 4. So this will be only for one mark. These two fractions are identical. Now we have this expression fx given as 1 minus 8 over x squared plus 1. And the domain is x is greater than 2. Now keep in mind, 2 is not inclusive. If I plug in 2, if I take x is equals to 2, we know that if I focus on this denominator, this is 2 squared plus 4, which is 4 plus 4, which simplifies to 8. This is just the denominator. Now, let me choose a value, which is 3. So this is 3 squared plus 4, 9 plus 4, which is 13. We are just talking about the denominator. Let me choose x is equals to 10, therefore 10 squared plus 4, which is 104. This is the denominator. That means the denominator is keep on getting bigger. The whole fraction will keep on getting smaller. So now if I focus my attention to this particular value, and if I evaluate f of two, this is one minus eight over, this value is eight over here. So this is one minus one, this comes out to be zero. Keep in mind, this is non-inclusive. Yes, we have evaluated this for two, but this is not included as two is not included in the domain over here. Keep that in mind. Now, if I keep on increasing this value, what will happen? Let me plug in a big value. Let's say I plug in 10. So this is one minus eight over 104. So now this value will be lesser than one. Actually, this is one. This would be something lesser. So this is lesser than zero, but it will be greater than one. That is the thing. Now let me plug in something like f of 100. So this is one minus eight over 100 square plus four. Again, this will be true. That means the limiting value is one. The limiting value is zero. Therefore, the range of this function lies between zero and one. That is how we calculate this domain because we don't know how to sketch this particular graph because it's not part of the syllabus. So we have to apply all this concept. I can even plug in infinity over here. So eight divided by infinity squared plus four, that will be almost negligible, almost zero. So I'll be left with a one. Therefore, this makes perfect sense. Now it says, explain why the composite function f of fx cannot be formed. Now, first of all, what does it mean? Let me show this. This is fx and then another fx. This is domain of this f. This is range of f. For this function, this is the domain of f and this is range of f. In order for composite to exist, the range of the first function should be a subset of domain of the other function. Now we go this way, because first x is inserted in this f, and then the result is inserted in this f. So range of f should be a subset of domain of f. Now, what is the range of f? We just found it, fx lies between zero and one. What is the domain of f that is x is greater than two? This is not a subset of this. That means if I draw it on a number line, this is zero, this is one, this is two. 
the domain of if is this thing. This is domain of if. And this is range of if of this number line. Since it does not fulfill this criteria, therefore the composite function f of fx does not exist is not defined. So that is the logic that the examiner has asked. And we have completed this question in eight minutes. So now six questions are down. Let me look at this question over here. Someone, can you repeat the range part? Okay, I'll sure, surely do that. Hold for a second. Okay, now have a look. Uh, you're talking about this range over here, right? Okay, now let's focus on this. Um, this thing over here is the domain. This whole thing is the function. This is the denominator. If I plug in two over here, two squared plus four is eight, one minus eight over eight is one minus one, which comes out to be zero. As I keep on increasing the X value, the denominator is increasing and increasing and increasing. Therefore, this answer is almost becoming zero. One minus zero will be left with one. So the range lies between, it uh, oscillates between the value zero over here and one over here. That is how we get this particular range. That's the only logic that we can apply. I hope I've answered this particular question. <clears throat> okay, uh, six uh, down, seven. Now let's get started. June, 2022, first variant, question number seven. Let's scroll up and have a good look at the question. The diagram shows the equation, the curve with the equation. Let me get started. I'll start all over again. Hold for a second. June 2022, paper 11, one, one, question number seven. Let's read this question. The diagram shows the curve with equation such and such and the line such and such. So first of all, let me mark the curve in orange. That's the curve over here. So this goes like this. And this is the curve that's going up. I'm just marking some dots like this. And then in green, I'm marking the line. And uh, this line is going like this, and that is the line. Now, the curve is at the top for this particular portion, and the line is at the bottom. The curve and the line intersects at point A and B. I'm just uh, holding for uh, Azan. I'll be back in a few minutes. Let's say five minutes.
Okay, uh, I'm back. And uh, let's get started with question number seven again. And let me just go back, start. So we have the mics ready, voices clear. Let's get started. Now. <clears throat> Let's look at this question, June 2022, paper 1-1, one, one, question seven. I think uh, there is an issue, hold for a second. Let me share the screen again. Okay, hold for a second. Okay, I'm starting again. June 2022, paper 1-1, question seven. Let's look at this question. The diagram shows the curve with equation such and such. So that is the curve over here. And the line y is equals to half x plus one, that is the line. The curve and the line intersects at point A and B. Find the coordinates of A and B. That is the first part. So first of all, let's write the equation of the curve that is 3x minus 2 raised to power of half. And then there is the line y is equals to half x plus 1. And what we can do is that we can equate 3x minus 2 raised to power of half equals to half x plus 1. Let's square both sides in order to uh, make the equation solution possible. So therefore this is three X minus two equals to half X plus one whole square. This simplifies to one fourth X square. And this is two into half X into one, which is simply X plus one. This is three X minus two. Now let's multiply it out. And then what do we have? We have uh, four into three, that's 12 X minus eight equals to X square plus four X plus four. Let's transfer all the terms to one side. So zero equals to X square as it is. This is four minus 12. That is negative eight X and four plus eight, that is 12 equaling to zero. Let's do middle term factorization. So this is x squared negative 6x negative 2x plus 12 equals to 0. x x minus 6 minus 2x minus 6 equals to 0. x minus 6 and x minus 2 equaling 0. Therefore, x comes out to be 6 and x comes out to be 2. And we have the equation of the line y is equals to half x plus one. So let me write this thing as half x plus one over here. When we plug in x is equals to six, y is equals to half into six plus one, which comes out to be four, the coordinate is six comma four. And when we plug in x is equals to two, y is equals to half into two plus one, which is one plus one is two. Therefore, this is two comma two. Now let's go up and have a look at the diagram. This is two comma two, this is six comma four. So let me write it in the proper order with the proper symbol. So therefore this is A and this is B. So these are the coordinates of A and B. Now it says find the area of the shaded region between the curve and the line. Now let's go up once again. And let me draw this portion of the line from A till B. And let me drop a vertical like this and let me drop a vertical like this. So this is the area under the line. So these two are the parallel sides, it's a trapezium. The X coordinate of A is two, the Y coordinate is two, the X coordinate of B is six and the Y coordinate is four. So the length of these two parallel sides are two and four, and this is the height, which is four units. 
So let me write down area of this trapezium, which is pretty simple. There is no need of integration. That is how sum of parallel sides, which is two plus four multiplying with the height, which is four. So this comes out to be 12 square units. That's the area under the line. That is this area. What about this area, blue area over here? That is what we are looking for. But the blue area and the orange area, these two add up to the area that is under the curve. So let me find the area under the curve and then I'll subtract the orange area and I'll find the blue area. So therefore, we will write, first of all, area under trapezium. That is area of the trapezium that's under the line. That is 12 square units. The working is already done upstairs. And area under the curve, that has to be done, calculated using integration between the limits two and four. And what is the equation of the curve? That's right over here, three X minus two raised to power of half. So let me write this thing. This is three X minus two raised to power of half. So this becomes three X minus two the power increases by one. So half plus one is three over two division by three over two. Also, we need to divide by the coefficient of X, which is three. And there are no limits. Uh, there is no constant of integration. Definitely there is the limit. This is two and four. So first of all, this is three into three over two. Three multiplying with three over two is nine over two. After flipping, this is two over nine. And this is 3x minus 2 raised to power of 3 over 2. And the limits are 2 and 4. Let me plug in the upper limit first. So this is 2 over 9 on the outside. 3 into 4 is 12. 12 minus 2. That is uh, 10. Let me just double check the equation. Uh, this is 3x minus 2. And this is two and six. So the limit is not two and four, it's two and six. So let me go back, hold for a second. So let me just do this correction. Okay, let me start working from here. Now let me find the area under the curve. That is, let's integrate the equation between the limits two and six. The equation is three X minus two raised to power of half DX. We will apply chain rule of integration. Bracket remains as it is. Power increases by one, divide by the new power, also divide by the coefficient of X, which is three, and the limits are two and six. Now, first of all, let's simplify. 3 into 3 over 2. That comes out to be 9 over 2, but this is in the denominator. We have to flip it and we will write it as 2 over 9. And this is 3x minus 2 raised to power of 3 over 2 between the limits 2 and 6. So let's plug in the upper limit. 3 into 6, 18. 18 minus 2 is 16. 16 raised to power of 3 over 2. So 16 raised to power of three over two is basically 16 raised to power of half raised to power of three. That is four raised to power of three, which is 64. So this is two over nine. And let me write down the first bracket, which simplifies to 64. And then what is happening with the two over here? So three into two is uh, six, six minus two is four and four raised to power of three over two. That simplifies to four raised to power of half raised to power of three, which is two raised to power of three, which is eight. So this is eight over here. So therefore this is 64, this is eight, this is 56. So this is 112 over nine square units. So therefore the area of the shaded region, the area between the curve and the line, whether it's shaded or not, that is what we are looking for. 
So that is 112 over 9 minus how much? Which is 12. So therefore, uh, I think the line is at the top. TK, the curve is at the top. So now the curve is at the top and this is at the bottom. So this simplifies and we get the answer as how much? That is 4 over 9 units square. That is the answer of this shaded region. So we have completed this question regarding simultaneous equations and area between a curve and a line in approximately eight minutes. So this is done. Let's move to this one. And let's get started. June 2022, paper 1-1, one, one, question number eight. Now the question says, the curve y is equals to sine x is transformed to this curve, four sine half x minus 30 degrees. Describe fully a sequence of transformations that have been combined, making clear the order in which the transformations are applied. Now, first of all, we have y is equals to sine x. And then we have y is equals to sine of half x. And then we have i is equals to sine bracket half x minus 30 degrees. And then we have four sine half x minus 30 degrees. Now this is the order that makes sense. Basically, we are starting with x, we are making it half x, then we are shifting it, and then we are stretching it. So let's focus on the first transformation that is from the orange to the green. So this first transformation is basically stretch, or we can also say compression along x-axis. So when it's a compression along x-axis, the scale factor is the reciprocal of the coefficient of x. So therefore we will say the scale factor is two. What is the next one? The next one, which is the blue one over here. This is a horizontal shift of 30 degrees to the right. Because of the negative sign, it's a shift of 30 degrees to the right. We can also write the translation vector, which makes sense to be written. That is 30 degrees and zero like this. And what is the third one? The third one is a stretch along the y-axis. So the third one, this is a stretch along y-axis and the scale factor is four. So these are the three transformations that are happening over here. This is the sequence. Let's move to the second part. Now it says, find the exact solutions. So we are interested in the exact solution of this equation and x lies between zero and 360. First of all, let's make sine x sine of this bracket, the subject, which is half x minus 30 degrees is equals to two root two divided by four. So two root two over four is the same thing as root two over two. And when we are dealing with sine, we know that sine inverse of root two over two comes out to be 45 degrees. This will be our basic angle, the acute angle with the x-axis. So let's get started. First of all, we are dealing with a positive value of sine. So we are talking about the first and the second quadrants. We know that in the first quadrant, x is equals to the basic angle alpha. I'm using this symbol. And for the second quadrant, x is equals to 180 degrees minus the basic angle. What else is there? Let 
alpha be the basic angle, the acute angle with the x-axis. The working is already done. Let me write it in a sequence. Sine of alpha is root two over two. Therefore, alpha is 45 degrees. So we have found alpha over here. Now over here, this x is not x. Or let me write instead of x, a bracket. Let me write instead of x, a bracket. What's inside the bracket? Half x minus 30 degrees is equals to 45 degrees. This is for the first quadrant. Therefore, half x is equals to 45 plus 30, which is 75. Therefore, x comes out to be 150 degrees. Similarly, half x minus 30 degrees is equals to 180 minus the basic angle, which is 45. Half x is equals to 135 plus 30 degrees, which is 165. Therefore, x is 330 degrees. This is for the second quadrant. So therefore, the very, very final answer for this part is 1. 150 degrees and 330 degrees. These are the final answers for this question and it's already in the exact form. So that's how this particular question is completed and it took us five and a half minutes. So eight questions are down. Let's move to the ninth question. Okay. So let's get started with this. Okay. June 2022, paper 11, question number nine. Let's read the question. We have the circle equation given as x squared plus y squared plus 6x minus 2y minus 26 equals to 0. Part A, find the coordinates of the center of the circle and the radius, hence find the coordinates of the lowest point on the circle. Now, first of all, uh, let's write it in the proper format, x squared and 6x goes with that. And then y squared and then negative 2y goes with that and let's transfer 26 to the other side. And we have to change it into the completed square form. What is the completed square form? X minus H whole square. Y minus K whole square equals to R square where HK is the center of the circle and R is the radius. Keep in mind on the other side, we get R square. So we will write X square plus six X plus bracket square minus bracket square. And then we have y squared minus 2y plus bracket squared minus bracket squared equals to 26. What goes over here? 3 and 3. This is half the coefficient of x. What goes over here and over here? This is half the coefficient of x, which is negative 1, negative 1. So the first one is x plus 3 whole square. And the other one is y minus one whole square. And we have 26 on this side. And we have minus nine over here. And we have minus one over here. So nine plus one is 10 taken to the other side becomes positive 10. So this is 36, which is basically six square. And this is x plus three whole square. And this is y minus one whole square. And I can compare it with x minus h whole square, and this is y minus k whole square equals to r square. Therefore, h is negative three, therefore k is positive one, therefore negative three comma one, that's the center of the circle. r square is six square, therefore r comes out to be six. Now, let me just draw the center over here, not the whole circle, just the center. And if, I go this much up, that would be the topmost point. If I go this much down, that would be the lowest point, the bottom of the circle. Now, how much can I go up? How much can I go down? Naturally, it's the radius. Now, if I look at the center, this is the y-coordinate of the center. 
So if I'm talking about the top, if they ask this question, so I'll say one plus six, that would be seven. So this would be the Y coordinate. Similarly, what about the bottom? It should be one minus six, which comes out to be negative five. That would be the Y coordinate. The X coordinate remains the same. It's unchanged for the top and the bottom. So therefore the lowest point would be minus three comma negative five. This is the lowest point. And if they were asking for the highest point, we will write negative three comma seven. So this is the answer that is required over here. Now let's look at this part. Now the question says, find the set of values of the constant K for which the line intersects the curve at two distinct points. Now this seems like a question of discriminant B squared minus four AC is greater than zero. Now we have different formats of the equation of a circle. We have this format as well as we have this format, which is x plus three whole square, y minus one whole square is equals to 36. So let me use the second format. x plus three whole square, and this is y minus one whole square equals to 36. And we have this equation, y is equals to kx minus five, y is equals to kx minus five. So let's just simplify it on the outside. So therefore, y minus one would be kx minus five minus one, which is kx minus six. And now let's square it. So kx minus six whole square, that is k square x square, minus two into six into k, which is 12 kx plus 36. This is what I've got. So therefore, this is k square x square, this is negative 12 kx, this is 36 equals to 36 over here. And this is x plus three whole square, which is x square plus six x plus nine. And now let's simplify it. So this 36 gets canceled and we have x square and this is k square x square. So which is x squared, the coefficient is k squared plus one. And we have six x and minus 12 kx. So let's write this thing as six minus 12 k. This is the coefficient of x. And then we have a nine over here, and that's all about it. And this is plus nine equals to zero. So always it's a good idea to double check. The coefficient of x squared is k squared plus one. The coefficient of x term is six minus 12k. The constant term is nine. And now let's apply the concept. The discriminant concept b squared minus four ac is greater than zero because the intersection is at two distinct points. So therefore six minus 12k whole square minus four into k squared plus one into nine is greater than zero. Let's simplify it further. So this is 36 minus 12 into six is 72 into two, that's 144K. And this is 144K squared. And this is four into nine is 36 minus 36K squared. And four into nine, that is negative 36 is greater than zero. Again, it's a beautiful coincidence that the two 36 are canceling out. And we have 36, 144, and 36. I think that's 108k squared minus 144k is greater than zero. Now keep in mind, whenever we are getting a quadratic inequality, it is necessary to factorize. And then based upon the sketch, we will write down the answer. So just let me take k common out. And I'm left with 108k minus 144. Yes, I could have taken a constant common out also, but my focus is just to show that factorization of any type is necessary. Now let me draw the axes over here. And let me draw the curve like this because the coefficient of k squared is positive. So that's how it goes. One of the value is zero, 
the other value is 144 over 108. So 144 over 108 is coming out to be 4 over 3. Okay. So now we are interested in greater than 0. That's the region above the x-axis, this region and this region. So go right, go left, and we will be in this region. So x is lesser than 0. Actually, it's not x, it's k. So k is lesser than 0 and k is greater than 4 over 3. These are the answers for this particular inequality. So we have solved the circle equation question in approximately nine minutes. Now let's look at the last question. I think that's the last one. And that is question number 10. So let's get started with this. June 2022, paper 1-1, one, one, question number 10. Let's focus on this question. The equation of the curve is such that the second derivative is 6x squared minus 4 over x cubed. The curve has a stationary point such and such. Now, first of all, let me write two pieces of information over here. The first one is when x is negative 1, y is 9 over 2. The second piece of information is when x is negative 1, y prime dy by dx, the first derivative is 0 because it's a stationary point. And what are they asking in the first part? Determine the nature. When x is negative 1, d square y over dx square is 6 into negative 1 square minus 4 over negative 1 cube. This is 6 into 1 minus 4 over negative 1. This is positive. This is positive because of this. So therefore, if the second derivative is positive, therefore, it's a minimum point. That is what we are looking for. We are not interested in the value as such. We can observe very clearly that it will turn out to be positive. If the second derivative is positive, it's a minimum point. That is the first part. Now it's asking for the equation of the curve. First of all, the second derivative is given as 6x squared minus 4x raised to power of negative 3. When we differentiate it, actually integrate it for the first time, we get dy by dx. That is integral of 6x squared minus 4x minus 3 dx. This is 6x cubed divided by 3 minus 4 as it is. x raised to power of negative 3 plus 1 divided by negative 3 plus 1 plus a constant of integration c. Let's first simplify. This is 2x cubed. Minus 3 plus 1 is negative 2. And this is negative 4 over here. So after division, this becomes positive 2. And this is 1 over x squared plus c. And this is dy by dx. Now let's scroll up. This is the condition that we have. x is negative 1. y is 9 over 2. x is negative 1. dy by dx is 0. We will use the second one. So x is negative 1. And dy by dx is equals to 0 because it's a stationary point. So this is 0. This is 2 into negative 1 cube. This is 2 into 1 over negative 1 square plus c. This is negative 2. This is positive 2. This is c. This is 0. Coincidentally, c is coming out to be 0. So now we have dy by dx given as how much? This is 2x cubed. So this is 2x cubed plus 2x raised to power of negative 2 and c is 0. Now, y, the equation of the curve is the integral of 2x cubed plus 2x minus 2 dx. So let's integrate this. So this is 2x power 4 divided by 4, 2 as it is, x raised to power of negative 2 plus 1 divided by negative 2 plus 1 plus another constant of integration k. So this is 2 over here. This is negative 1 over here. So this is negative 2 over x. And this is k. And this is half x power 4. This is y. Now, what is the other condition that we have? x is negative 1. y is 9 over 2. So we have x is negative 1. 
y is 9 over 2. Let's evaluate k. So let me do it at this corner. So therefore, 9 over 2. And uh, negative 1 raised to power of 4, it will become positive. So this is half into 1. And this is minus 2. And this is dividing by negative 1. This will also become positive plus k. So this is 9 over 2. And this is half. And this is plus 2. And this is k. So we need to find value of k. So therefore, 9 over 2 minus half minus 2 equals 2k. So 8 over 2 is uh, 4. 4 minus 2 is 2. Therefore, k comes out to be 2. Therefore, once the value of k is 2, this is the equation of the curve. So the equation of the curve is found by double integration. Now it says, show that the curve has no other stationary points. Do we have dy by dx? Yes, we do have it. So 2x cubed plus 2 over x squared. So dy by dx is equals to 2x cubed plus 2 over x squared. And I can write this thing equal to 0. So therefore, 2x cubed is equals to minus 2 over x squared. Therefore, x power 5 is negative 1. Therefore, x is the fifth root of negative 1, which comes out to be negative 1. So this is the only turning point, only stationary point, And this was already given. Therefore, we have proven that there is no other stationary point on this curve. Now, let's look at the last part. It says, a point A is moving along the curve and the y coordinate of A is increasing at a rate of five units per second. So dy by dt is five units per second. Find the rate of increase of the x coordinate of A. So we are looking for dx by dt at the point where x is equals to one. When x is equals to one, we know that dy by dx, we just wrote two x cubed and this is plus two over x squared. So let me plug in this one over here. Let me plug in this one over here. And let me also double check the equation two x cubed two over x squared, that's perfect. So therefore this simplifies to two plus two, which comes out to be four. We have y, we have x, we have t. How are they related? they are related dy by dt is equals to dy by dx into dx by dt. dy by dt is given as 5. dy by dx came out to be 4. We are interested in finding dx by dt. So that's very simple. dx by dt is coming out to be 5 over 4 or 1 1 fourth or 1.25 units per second. So this complete question is done in less than seven and a half minutes. So that's how we have completed the whole paper. And that's all about this particular paper. See you in the next class.